All right. So, hi. Hi, I'm Roland Worcester. I'm uh, the chair of the Display Performance Metrics Workgroup. And we develop the standards for all of Vaser's front of screen standards, Display HDR, Adaptive Sync, and Clear MR. So I want to talk about the latest standard that we updated, um, Adaptive Sync 1.1a, that was updated last week. And the 1.1a version of the spec includes two new optional features for OEMs that they can select if their hardware supports these new features. The first of which is exhibited by this uh, Dell monitor. And in this case, the, the typical speed of this monitor would be the factory default setting of 480 frames per second. But this monitor also offers overclocking. And while this monitor can be overclocked to 500 hertz, other monitors may have a, a bigger difference and be able to overclock even further. What we wanted to do in VESA is we wanted to build a standard that would support the OEMs being able to have their device tested in the factory setting, because we know most users are going to use the device in factory setting mode, but also some users are going to use it in overclocked mode. And in the overclocked mode, we wanted to test it again, so repeat the entire set of test compliance specs at the overclock speed so that they could use the overclock speed in the logo should it, of course, pass the logo testing at both the factory mode and the uh, overclock speed. Uh, I've been looking at, uh, hearing about the overclocking for 25 years or something like that. There's a big community of people overclocking stuff. Yeah, there is. I mean, and, and the overclocking we've heard of for 25 years is, is mostly CPU or GPU or memory speed overclocking. But now there's the possibility to overclock your monitor as well. And what's happening is perhaps the power level of the monitor is higher or perhaps uh, the, the, the image quality is compromised in one way or another. But when you're overclocking on a monitor, it's not the default configuration that comes through the out-of-the-box out of factory defaults, but rather you as an end user go into the OSD menu settings, change the overclocking, and you know, add that additional performance that may have some consequences, such as additional power, for example. And that's why it's not set that way by, by default in the factory settings. Maybe some OLED screens have a limit on the brightness or something. And Indeed. Uh, it it uh, may compromise brightness. It may compromise flicker. It may compromise power. It could potentially compromise warranty and, and durability. I mean, you know, every display is going to be different. And we don't really look at what does overclocking do to the monitor or what are the impact, but merely does it still pass VASA's quality specs? And if it passes VASA's quality specs in the overclock mode, then it's eligible to use the overclock's performance in the Adaptive Sync logo speed. Because uh, displays and the processing that happens in displays is an impressive thing, right? There's a lot of thing happening in there to there's process a, all this. There's a significant amount of processing inside the scalers and the TCOMs inside the display, yes. Uh, they're yeah. not just like dumb uh, uh, windows. The, the bit rate is enormous. When you take into account the number of pixels on the screen, I mean, a 4K screen has 8 million pixels. And of course, in a monitor, those pixels are red, green, and blue subpixels. So you've got 24 million subpixels being updated at hundreds of frames per second. So you're transmitting an enormous amount of data within the display, and it's doing a tremendous amount of work. And these fu funny uh, young guys, the, the gamers and all that, uh, they just push this all the time. They want yeah. more frames. Yeah, the more, more, frame, more frames more will frame get you. More frame rates faster, they, uh, more colors, more HDR, and it's like it's nonstop. It's nonstop. More demand. The, yeah, the, the, it's an exciting business, and there's lots of opportunities for display vendors to continue building greater, greater and faster and more interesting and exciting products. And bigger. And bigger, too, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about this other device. This is a, the, an LG OLED monitor that is the other example of what is new in the Adaptive Sync 1.1a spec. So what is truly unique about this is it's a new category of display, one that you have a 4K monitor that runs at 240 frames per second. But if you also want to use it as a first-person shooter monitor, 
and you want a higher frame rate, some gamers may so find themselves in the situation that they would, they would ideally want two monitors. They would want one monitor that's high resolution, like a 4K monitor, and they would want one monitor that's super high refresh rate that might be only 1080p. With this class of monitor, watch this. If you have a look at the, uh, the frame rate on the screen, I'm gonna press a button here, and it is going to disconnect, reset the EDID, and then come back at an entirely different performance level. So we're now running at 480 hertz, or 480 frames per second on the monitor, because it's dropped the resolution to 1080p, and we're, oh, this, this is a, a test tool, a web-based test tool. Um, yeah, the, the browser needs to keep up with this. The, the browser is struggling to keep up with us, yeah, indeed. Um, but this is a 480 hertz in 1080p mode, while when you're using it for content creation or for games that don't need quite the super fast latency, but benefit from improved graphics, you can have it in 4K mode, and we can switch back to the uh, 4K mode, and it disconnects, reconnects, and comes back as a, uh, it'll reset in the browser. So there we go, we're back to 240 hertz, and we're at 4K resolution. Uh, th does it have anything to do with the interlacing or something like that? Where there's some kind of trick where you can just double the hertz? So, it's, uh, uh, you, you, it's close to that. It's, it's not quite interlacing, but this new display technology, what, what has been enabled in this, and it looks like we have some Windows updates, but um, <laughs> uh, it, it, in, with this new technology, what they're doing is they're taking a two by two pixel cluster. So two pixels across, two pixels high, and if you run that block of four pixels as a single pixel, they can run the display much faster because you've got much less data to deal with because you're dealing with four times fewer pixels. And so with that, they can double the frame rate in this particular instance. Nice. And uh, all the pixels are going that fast on the whole screen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's 480 hertz when you're in 1080p mode. So this is, this is back again at 4K. Uh, resolution running at 240 hertz, but when we switch mode, then it's a 1080p resolution. So every set of four pixels in a two by two cluster is being grouped together as one pixel, and the internal um, electronics of the display can drive it twice as fast because it's got four times less work to do. M maybe finally I'll be able to see all the tweets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at that speed. All right, cool. Okay, let's yeah. uh, take a look at the next demo. So uh, this is a, an MSI laptop that uh, is a, a, a fantastic example of uh, adopting VESA's front of screen display standards. It uses the Display HDR 600 um, True Black uh, certification for the OLED screen. It also has our Adaptive Sync 240 Hertz um, uh, flicker and jitter performance uh, logo, and then ClearMR 9000. And this was something that was launched about a year ago um, that we showed at CES last year. This year, we have this Razor Blade 16 that has increased the ClearMR performance to 11,000. So this is now the highest performing um, motion blur reduced um, mobile device with a clear MR score of 11,000. And then, can you explain again the clear MR score? Yeah, so clear MR, it's uh, VESA's measurement of um, how clear the screen is. So it's the comparison of clear pixels, sharp pixels versus blurry pixels when you have motion on the screen. So a clear MR of 11,000 actually means 110 clear pixels for every one blurry pixel. So you have motion, and you've got 110 to one ratio at the clear MR 11,000 level. And, and it, this can really be felt in, uh, in video games. Yeah, especially when you have motion, particularly horizontal motion. So when you're panning in a game in a first person shooter or driving game, and you're moving left to right, and the screen is changing left to right, you can really see the reduction in blur of the pixels. Does that help in watching movies and, and, it, and video it, it, content? It, if there's motion, yes, uh, you would have less motion blur uh, in a movie. And now, some of that motion blur may be artistic intent. 
So whether you're going to really see it or need the difference in a movie is a, perhaps debatable. But it's really optimized for games, the clear MR usage. I feel like that's my argument for doing 4K60 the last five years is because I want to have less motion blur, but I never know if it's true what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's, it's the, the motion blur, it's, it's it, a totally different metric than the resolution or the refresh rate. So the clear MR standard that VESA has established is exactly for that, to help you determine which displays are going to be particularly good at reducing blur. And that's really a, uh, a piece, uh, good for the eyes to not have all this blur. You don't want to have blur. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it helps you. I mean, you can see with this, this Blur Busters web demo, you can see, and I don't know if the camera will pick it up. You might have to pan the camera to follow the spaceship. But if you can follow the spaceship while it's moving across the screen, that will show you that the, the top line at 240 is much, much clearer than the other lines. Right. And then this final demonstration, this is the uh, first time we've been showing a Display HDR 1000 uh, laptop. So this is Display HDR 1000 certified. It's a 16 inch uh, mini LED display in a gigabyte aero laptop. 1000 nits. 1000 nits. Absolutely fantastic for content creation. Wow. Um, this snow and, is right and this, there. Yeah. All right. My, capture, my camera is not going to capture uh, all this, <laughs> this stuff. All right. So thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks.